Good evening from the skybox in the corner of the level. This is Res Mason, how you doing today? Before long we're gonna pick up where we left off last week. I might as well go through the rigmarole and explain real quickly what I'm doing and why. Oops, wrong directory. write a script for that. Right. Uh, this is the Wireworld player. It is a purely JavaScript web app that allows you to run Wireworld instances like this, the Wireworld computer, which is the copyrighted work of David Moore and Mark Owen. Wireworld is four colors, occupying a bunch of pixels in a picture. And those four colors follow four different rules. Here we are. The dead cells, which are these colors here that make up the majority of the background never change. The tail cells, which are these yellow ones, always become wire cells. So every time we advance the simulation, the tail cells here in yellow become wire cells in gray. And the head cells in orange always become tail cells in yellow. It's kind of like a locomotive and a caboose. And lastly, wire cells in gray become head cells in, what was it, orange or yellow? <laughs> in orange, I should change these colors to match those colors. Anyway, um, wire cells in gray always become head cells in orange if they touch one or two heads. So over here, this cell touches three heads. It does not change into a head. This cell touches, uh, no, that's a tail. This cell, you know what, let's just watch it. Tail, right. Okay, so this cell is neighbor to one head, so it will turn yellow. Oh my god, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, the current is flowing in this direction. So, orange is a head, yellow is a tail. Um, this cell 
has one head neighbor, so it will become a head. This cell has three head neighbors, which is too much. It becomes a tail. Uh, sorry, it stays wire. This cell has one head neighbor. It becomes a head. There we go. Head, head. The previous heads become tails. The previous tails become wires. In this way, even though none of these pixels move, signals propagate through the simulation. Sometimes, often in fact, they just propagate in a loop. Sometimes those loop have branches, and sometimes those branches just quickly terminate. But if you use these loops and branches as circuits, you can organize information so that simple signals have complex res oopsie. Simple signals have complex results. In the previous episode of this pod of <laughs> podcast, in the previous episode of this stream, we got the simulation to run really quickly. And this looks pretty quick, and that's nice and all, but... Um, at the moment, what we're looking at is restricted to the frame rate of the website. The website updates maybe 30 or 60 frames a second, something like that. Some realistic number of frames of sec uh, per second. Um, or reasonable, some reasonable number of frames per second. But we've got this button here that accelerates, there we go, accelerates the speed at which, you know what, let me change that speed. Engine, what was it, 192? Uh, after last week's stream, I was experimenting with different values for that multiplier. And 192 is a good value. Here we go. And the reason it's a good value... Um, so, you know, it looks right now like a lot of these cells aren't moving. And that's because we've chosen a number that... Here, let me just... Let me demonstrate this really quick. If we change this to one, then turbo mode goes as fast as regular mode. Um, one interesting thing is wire world circuits can have, um, that's weird. What is, There might be some gunk on my mouse that's triggering scroll events, but otherwise, I need to investigate a bug. Okay, there we go. If we look at one of these ROM components here, there's a signal, there's an electron head and tail pair right here. And if we advance one, two, three, four, five, six, we're back where we started. Now, that is just based on the architecture of this part of the engine. Up here, let's try that again. Something's going on with scrolling today. It might be because I'm recording at a higher resolution. I just discovered that the first five episodes of this live stream were recorded uh, at a resolution too low for the videos to be that interesting on YouTube for folks who watch after the stream finishes. So the resolution's higher now, but that also means that the the performance hit of recording every moment of the stream to disk in uh, to to memory um, might have a larger impact on the simulation. Uh, so if we look at these uh, electrons, and we just um, we advance one by one, one two three. One, two, three. Well, we only have to advance three times for this pattern to repeat itself. So let's try this. Let's replace turbo as a value with three and refresh. Now, if we zoom in, 
on this area and we advance, uh, sorry, uh, and we hit turbo and we press play, it's going to look like it's not moving. And that's because it's advancing in threes. It's not advancing one thing at a time, it's advancing three things at a time. And if we look down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, slow this down, play. It's flickering really quickly, I'm sorry about that, but um, these cells are flickering between this state, one, two, three, and this state, one, two, three, and back again. And that is because, as we saw, it takes six steps for these to cycle, twice as many as this one. So if we turn the turbo value to three times two, which is six, and turn on turbo. There we are. It looks like this part of the image isn't moving at all. And it looks like this part isn't moving at all. Some flickering still occurs. And then up here, things seem to be moving very quickly, but they still are animating, right? It turns out that this loop, this loop here, is I believe 16 bits and the bits the electrons are six uh, are spaced six uh, cells apart so we've already got six in here that's three times two but if we then do times 16 actually let's just let's try eight first because that's that might work. I think it needs to be 16. Let's check. Turn on turbo, press play. Yeah, we're now seeing flickering in the registers of the Wireworld computer um, between two states. So if we change this to 16, so that is the that is the number of bits in a register. And we press play. There we go. So now it looks like the registers are staying put, and that's cool. Um, it's, it's a little odd, right, that we would want the simulation to look like nothing is moving. But that's the point of Turbo, to kind of advance the generations as quickly as possible. There we are. Three is a prime, but you knew that. So what other loops can we use? Well, if we look closely at the patterns going up and down here, there's a read up here. So there's, it's sort of like, let's wait for it to happen. Here we go. So there's a signal that goes up this wire and then it comes down like this and it crashes into another symbol, uh, into another signal going in the opposite direction. Let's see that happen again. Signal goes up, another signal goes up, and they crash, and the results trickle down. That happens on the left side of the registers, and then another one happens on the right side of the registers, and it's a little bit more complicated, because instead of uh, two signals uh, that collide somewhere, like that, it's three signals that collide. And these correspond with reading something from memory on the left and writing something f uh, to memory on the right. Um, and you might ask, okay, well, what is the, you know, what is, if that's a, if that's a big loop, if reading and writing is in a big loop, what's the uh, number of generations, uh, th you know, that, that loop is? Well, let's, let's try to measure it. So this train, Let's see. So this is a 16-bit loop. In fact, if we press play, sorry, if we press um, turbo and press play, this electron doesn't move because this is basically a memory width. It's 16 bits. So we'll watch. Um, oh no, that won't help. <laughs> okay, tell you what. Let's uh. Let's do this. We'll advance, and 
and we'll watch a... Here we go. So here's a signal. And... Um, there's like its last electron, more or less, trickling down to there. So this is the end of that train. Generation 63386. Let's write that down. 63386. And we'll do it again. We're going to wait for a train to go up and then down. step through it till the last bit is there. And this isn't precise because, you know, some of these bits might be zeros. And a zero bit isn't going to have any electrons here anyway. Um, 64526. 64526. Ah, okay. 1,140. And if we divide that by 16 times 6, oh. So 1140 is not divisible by our current cycle of 16 times 6, which is 96. So that's kind of too long a loop. Uh, by my current uh, standards. But there's this loop over here, and we could do the same thing. Um, you know, if we turn on turbo and press play, this kind of flickers a lot. So let's see if we can uh, measure this and figure out how many... Um... Well, we know that there's a lot of cells here, right? It's like one, two... So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen... I'm not going to count these. Point is, there's a whole lot of cells this way. Maybe maybe we can measure one of these long... Here, um... Owen, more horizontal. Let's scroll down. Here we are. So this is one of those loops. Oopsie. And it's 95 characters, and here is 96. So... In one direction, this pattern advances 96 steps. But in two directions, in, in both directions, it's twice of 96. So what's 96 times 2? 192. So if we go into our engine and set Turbo's um, count to 192, This big, long wire isn't going to loop, but it's going to kind of horizontal, uh, vertically scroll. Because the electrons that occupy one of these rows are going to move one row over. Once we turn turbo on. There we go. So it looks kind of like one of those scrolling displays. So I was just experimenting with that after last week's stream. It would be cool if we could advance uh, at around 1140 um, generations at a time, but uh, it's not likely, is it? Sorry, one second. Ah. Right. So it isn't likely. Um, based on the current implementation, we just have, you know, too much stuff going on. Like, 192 makes this unresponsive on my machine. If we go back to 96, that's about half, amount, half the same amount of work. A little better. Um, it would be even better if uh, I wasn't... Str what is... Creative Cloud keeps popping up, and I don't want it to. Okay. Um, you know, if OBS wasn't wasn't uh, streaming, and if um, 
I wasn't recording, then it would be performing even better. But, um, we are going to be looking into ways to offload the work of the engine uh, into a separate thread with what are called web workers. Worker, here we are. We're gonna look into what these are and how they work. Um, I have never, you know, I've never used uh, worker threads in this project before. And so this is new ground for me. And so I'm probably gonna be making a whole bunch of mistakes. Um, let's see, and there's some bugs to fix. Let me just look through this stuff, that's fine. Engine, count, timeout ID. Yeah, so I was doing set timeout to run things in, um, in uh, the engine, and it just occurred to me that I should probably do clear timeout and cancel animation frame if we uh, if we are playing, but we aren't doing turbo anymore. Or, or sorry, if turbo toggled, we just immediately run, and that'll oopsie. Um, Testing. Oh boy. There's a giant mute button on the cable of my audio headset. Sorry about that. Okay. Enough rambling. Um, so, engine is slightly better. We are calling uh, timeout ID equals set timeout. We're storing the timeout ID and we're like clearing that. We're clearing the animation. Um, no big change there. Um, and improved the code involving checkboxes in the GUI. These are just small things, so I'm just gonna quickly commit these. So, um, halting any pending calls to run when the, the turbo boolean changes. And then in here, um, mapping the T key to the turbo button with a new listen to checkbox helper function. And I might as well have the to-do piggyback on that last commit. No big deal. Okay. Before we dive into web workers today, um, one of the... So I have a friend named Emily, and uh, you, you might have heard of Extra Life. Uh, it is a nonprofit, um, what would you call it, initiative where folks who like to play games can play those games and encourage folks to donate to their gaming marathons. Not just video games, but, you know, other types of games. Um, Emily's raised 650 bucks of 775 so if you aren't doing Extra Life, I encourage you to. Uh, if you have a friend uh, who's doing Extra Life, I encourage you to donate to them. Um, but if not, uh, I wonder how easily I can share this. Right, I can paste it into the live stream chat. Here we go. Emily's Extra Life Fundraiser. There we are. Oh, for Pete's sake.
can't paste it into chat because I'm not signed in. Um, oh, here's something I can do. I can probably use... Oops. Twitch.tv. And I'm not signed in. Oh, you know what? Uh, Emily Donnelly. There we are, okay. So like I was saying, if you are uh, involved in an Extra Life fundraiser, thank you. Um, if you have a friend who is involved in one, uh, please donate. If you don't have a friend who is involved in one, please donate to my friend's fundraiser. She's very close to her goal. I've done that a couple times in the past, but I... Um, I think it was usually between myself and some co-workers, and during the uh, COVID-19 shelter-in-place and all that, um, it's been harder for folks in my office to coordinate that sort of thing. But anyway, um, right, so let's talk about web workers. And what is it? That sketch app from last time. Pseudo classes, sketchpad. And new file, graph paper. Right. Undo. So normally when JavaScript runs in a tab like ours, the here I'll use Firefox to demonstrate. Performance, record, play and pause and stop. Flame chart. And pop out. Oh, let's try that one more time. And stop, and stop. There we go. Um, I don't know why I'm unable to zoom here. That's... Sorry folks, something's up. There we go, okay. This is, <laughs> this is the zoomable flame chart. So, um, all these boxes that we've been looking at in previous episodes represent work being done uh, by the browser. Uh, Often, when Turbo isn't on, it sits idle, which is great. Uh, sometimes Gecko, which is Firefox's rendering engine, runs to update the appearance of the, um, the tab. Uh, sometimes our JavaScript runs, which is what this is. And it's all running together in a single process. All of these green boxes are the times when engine.js's run function was called. And the trouble that we get into is when things are running really hot and stop and pause. And so now there's basically no idle time between frames. If anything, the frames are kind of stretched out compared to previously. And that's because we are essentially competing with Gecko, Firefox's rendering engine, 
to run our action script and refresh the view. And so we have to limit the number of the number of steps that we um, are. Here we are. We have to limit it, this number, this count, this number of steps that we update per step, just so that we don't interrupt the browser's rendering process. Now, there's an alternative to that, um, which is, you know, uh, a computer like this one, like yours in all likelihood, uh, and pretty much every phone that folks are carrying around these days, has more than one processor. And it's entirely possible to take some of the work that we're doing and just sort of hand it to a different processor than the one that is in charge of drawing the screen. So this work, the dragging, the zooming, the animating of the UI, this stuff, all of this work can be left in the main thread, the same thread as the process that um, you know is in charge of the this browser tab and using what is called a web worker we can spawn a separate process that will be in charge of uh, updating the simulation so let's try one of those do I want to draw anything yeah I do okay Bef before we try web worker um, what we were just looking at in Firefox, this thing, can be thought of as a, as a loop, an event loop. Here it is, looping, right, like repeating itself. And part of it is drawing. Just gonna draw a pencil. It's got a render. And part of it is updating, um, which I will call, let's see, I'll draw a gear. It's not a great gear. So our work um, gets triggered as part of this um, request animation frame loop or um, a set timeout loop. Both of these rely on the standard JavaScript event loop um, implementation to take turns between the thing that the browser always has to do and the thing that we're asking it to do, right? And we are trying to kind of split the work instead. What we would like to do is instead of this, we're going to have the main loop And it's going to be in charge of drawing the screen and also like responding to button events and so on. All those things are happening in here. All the little events that a GUI emits, you know. But there will be a second one called the worker. And workers by default have their own event loop. And so we can have our gear in here. I am not great at drawing um, in this app anyway with a mouse that only has one mouse button. Um, and the question is like how does this work end up getting drawn over here? And so there need to be these messages that get sent and received and those messages also have events that are broadcast on the main loop and on the worker. Now, yeah, I think we will get at least this far today. So this is the old way, this is the new way. We're gonna keep our render loop going but we're going to spawn a worker and put our work in there. And we're going to figure out how to take the work that is done and box it up and ship it over 
to the main thread. And any changes to the GUI that affect the engine need to be boxed up and sent to the worker. Okay, so let's try to make a worker. This is in CodePen, by the way. CodePen is a great website for just sort of like throwing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript together and seeing what happens. Um, oops, scroll up, please. Scroll up. I don't understand. There we go. Okay. Console.clear, console.log, hello. There we are. And in settings, I'm going to change it so that behavior, save automatically off, auto update preview off. So now we have a save button and we have a run button. There we are. And it's going to keep track of our unsaved changes, and then we can click save uh, to save them. Oh, right. I'm not going to worry about that. We're just using this as like jo JavaScript scratch paper. Um, but if we click run, this should change to hello there. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so. Um, Say we have a say we have a function like this um, const do thing equals console.log math.random plus exclamation point do thing run. There it is. That's our random number. So do thing is working, but let's say we want to do it in a web worker. Um, first, I'm going to change this function into a string. Const fs equals do thing dot to string. Console dot log fs. This is a little unconventional. Usually, you load a worker from a JavaScript file somewhere else. There's our function. Cool. Um, now let's try this for let i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus. So now we're gonna be looping 100 times and we're gonna do console, um, console.log. And now we see some interesting additions that CodePen is adding to our project. It's injecting this weird line so we're going to get rid of it, dot replace, empty string, and run. And it's injecting this line, dot replace, empty string. There we go. So that's cool and all. We have a function that is being printed out as a string, um, but we want to feed it to a worker. So let's say um, const blob equals new blob um, fs const blob url equals url dot what's it called url blob url. What's this thing called? URL, uh, blob to URL, MDN. Create object URL, there we go. Okay. Create object URL, blob. Console.log blob URL. Run. There it is, cool. Um, and so now our, our functions string is now turned into this data blob that we will pass to a worker. Const worker equals new worker blob URL. And then 
URL dot revoke object URL blob URL. Um, worker. Ah. Dot add event listener message event. So this message event that's going to come from the worker that we've created is going to contain whatever data the worker sends us. So we're just going to console.log event.data. And then we're going to say worker.postmessage start. And we run it, and nothing should happen. Yeah. Because console is not in the web worker. Actually, it might be in this console. Console. It's not. Not going to worry about it. Um, what we're going to do instead is we're going to cut from here. We're going to say self dot add event listener message event. Post message. And so now the we the web worker is going to listen for a message and instead of console log it'll just post what it's doing. Let's try it in Firefox instead. I don't know why that scroll is misbehaving. There we go. Let's get rid of the one in Safari. Settings, behavior. Don't save automatically. Don't auto update preview. There we go. And I think I need to do a little bit more interesting stuff, like plus fs plus that. There we go. Okay. So I'm taking this function, and I'm just sort of packing it up into a worker, and I'm running it. And I've just got this... Um, const func to worker or just you know build worker equals f and then in here const fs is f2 string and we replace this stuff that's just for code pen worker whoops you want out somebody wants out one second So you can't tell just by looking at it, but, um, I mean, we know that, so this work is being done in a worker. The console output is happening because we are logging it. Here, I'll say this, um, data from worker, run. worker ah right 
const worker equals build worker do thing. Nice. You know what? I'm just gonna wrap this up. There we are. So, this is our worker. Guts. And down here we are listening for data from the worker and then we're sending it something. So in here we can say um, if event dot, you know what, let's do a switch case, switch event.data case start um, case end break okay and in here we can say uh, for example let running equals false uh, case start uh, if running running equals true run Case end if running running equals false. Um, you know what? We're going to change this to a uh, interval ID equals null. So if interval ID isn't null or is null, there we go. Then. Um, Yeah, I like this. Uh, set interval run um, 10. And then here, oh, whoops. Interval ID equals set interval 10, and then clear interval interval ID. And then up here, we're going to have a run function const run equals, um, and then post message math.random times uh, plus exclamation point. So in here, we've got a method run that's going to be run in an interval loop. Um, and so the event loop of the worker is going to trigger that work on a regular basis based on this 10 millisecond interval. And in that job in that run function we're posting a message uh, which we'll receive over here you know I also say um, running plus math random plus okay um, but it should stop when we say end so in here we'll say post message starting actually in here we'll say starting and in here we'll say already started. And then in here, if interval ID isn't null, then we clear it and interval ID equals null. And in here we'll say ending, oops, post message ending, else post message already or um, isn't running can't end isn't running there we are so now when we press run let's see what happens there we go so it's running and it's running pretty quickly uh, so we're going to just rerun without start turned on and we are going to, in here, we're going to say set timeout. Um, and in a short function, we're going to say um, worker.postmessage end. Console.log time to stop. Um, and also, I'm going to change this from 10 to a thousand, no, to a hundred. There we go. Um, so 10 times a second 
right? It's a thousand times point one, a tenth of a second. There we go. Okay. And post message start. Oh, right. Set timeout, post message stop, and we will stop it in three seconds. 3,000 milliseconds. So we run. And it didn't stop. Not sure why. I'm going to change the interval to half a second so we're not inundated with these um, time to stop post end case end okay so then default post message weird message plus event.data can't end isn't running interval id isn't null ending okay so it did get it did get the end message Can't end isn't running. Oh. Yeah, that's why. These need to be moved outside of the listener. My bad. Simple case of wrong scope. There we are. Okay. So, the interval ID starts at null, and... While it's running, it just says running, twice a second. And then when we say end, it stops, right? So, if you think about it, we could use this to render, or sorry, to uh, as like the engine. Uh, we, we probably won't use build worker, we don't need to do build worker, but in our worker, we can say, um, you know, tell me when to start, tell me when to end. And start and end from the, oh, and also, you know, Imagine we have a uh, case setup break. Post message setting up. So I mean, I don't think we could get race conditions here. There we go, setting up, starting, running, ending. Um, so we could do something similar in the wire world, uh, in the wire world player. We could make a me uh, we could make a worker that listens for commands from the main thread, um, and performs them in the order that they are requested. And then when we need the worker to stop, uh, it'll stop. The only question is how how fast can we make this right? If we do something like this, run zero. So the interval is zero on the worker thread and then we say let count equals zero and in run we say count plus plus if um, now you know what yeah if count percent a thousand is equal to zero post message count and in here start 
we'd say count as zero. And then, well, I guess actually, let's see. Yeah, set up, count as zero. Start, end, and in here, post message, final count, plus count. So let's just see what this does. Final count, 872. So with a set interval of zero milliseconds, the count gets as high as 872. Let's try that again. Eight hundred sixty-eight. Huh. What if I get rid of this and get rid of this? Eight hundred sixty-four. So these are still like roughly the same value. They're less than a thousand. Um, set interval will only cause that count to increment 864 times in three seconds here. 864 over, over three. 288. So essentially it's, it's ticking 288 times a second, which is, I think, pretty limited. Um, so let's try something different. Down here, um, interval ID, okay, so we're going to add this back. And run. What if we do this? While true count. This for loop, sorry, this, this while loop never terminates. Once run is called, it is never stopped. And so, in start, we'll just say run. Ah, let's do this. Instead of let interval ID, let running equal false uh, while running. Set up post message um, if not running, then run. Otherwise, already started. Cool. End if running, post message ending, running equals false, final count, and okay, there we go. So what do you think is going to happen if I do this? Remember, if this was in JavaScript, sorry, <laughs> if this was in the main thread, um, if this code looped forever, it would kind of be stuck looping forever. And the browser at some point would intervene and say, hey, um, you know, because I'm in charge of rendering, right? Like if this sort of code was in here, the browser at some point shows a pop-up saying, hey, you know, I'm in charge of rendering. And I've noticed that this work here um, hasn't hasn't stopped uh, in the past three or ten seconds or whatever. Do you want to stop it? And the user, seeing that, it's a kind of scary pop-up, might say, uh, "Yeah, stop the stop the script. I don't know what it's doing." And then the app is simply broken, right? Um, but in a worker, that doesn't happen. There's no browser checking on this worker. So when this while running uh, is reached, 
the only way to stop it is if this event loop finishes, right, and goes back to the set interval, clear interval, sort or sorry, uh, goes back to the through the event loop to receive a message. So if the work is in a while loop, if the while loop breaks, then you can go around, you can get this message that says stop doing what you're doing, and when it goes back around, it calls run again, which again we aren't doing, right? There's no set interval here. Um, so is this while running, is it going to become false? Probably not, right? End is probably never going to be run. Let's find out. So we're running, setting up, starting. Time to stop. Can't end isn't running. Hang on. Start. Start. Starting. Post message starting run. While running, count plus plus. Okay, let's do this. Up here, console.log fs. No injections. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Um, here we go. My bad. Running equals true. There we go. It wasn't looping, that's why. Okay, clear. And run. Here we go. That is very fast. And we know that it hasn't stopped. It's been three seconds, it didn't bother stopping. So it's not listening for the end. But what we could do instead of that is worker.terminate. Run. There we go, time to stop. So, we can forget about telling this worker when to end. There is only setup and start, which frankly can be the same, right? Setting up and then it can be like, um, here we don't need running anymore. While true. And I'm gonna change this to 10,000. No, wait, it's just so fast. Let's try 100,000 like that. Okay, and then self add event listener, message event, switch, count to zero, that's good. Here, I'll just call this start. Starting. Running is no longer true. There. Oops. There. Count to zero. I know that we already set the count to zero up here, but imagine if event.data isn't just a string, but is like an object, and that object has like a start value. So that's kind of what this represents. Uh, running is true, run, uh, running is true is gone, right? So, let's try this. It's running really quickly. Probably because this while loop does not have a lot going on. Right. Um, let's do this. Um, start count. Let count equal start count. Run zero. Cool. Yep. And let last check equal performance dot now. While true, um, let now equal performance dot now. And if 
now minus last check is greater than or equal to a thousand. In other words, if more than a second has passed since last check, then last check equals now, and that's when we'll post message count. So now, once a second in the worker, we're going to see how high the count has gotten. And this can, rep, you know, this can be a gauge for how many times we can loop uh, in a second in a worker. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to change this three to ten seconds, so we can get ten values out of this uh, this while loop, and. I'm going to reset count equals zero each time. Count is zero. I'm going to get rid of start count. Run. Oh. Easy mistake to make. Count is zero. There we go. And, um, yeah. So an empty, a mostly empty while loop, a while loop that only increments a count, like increments a number, and creates a performance timestamp and compares two performance timestamps. This amount of work in a while loop in a worker can happen this number of times per second. The only problem is, as soon as you start this while loop, the worker stops listening. It sends messages, that's cool, but it stops listening. So the only way to model this kind of strategy for looping is to create a worker and start it, and then terminate it at the right time. This is the strategy that we're going to apply to the Wireworld player. Uh, before we do that, though, um, I would like to point out that the friend who helped me figure this sort of stuff out is none other than the husband of my friend Emily Donnelly, Pat Donnelly. And again... Okay, search results have expired. Not a great website, but a great fundraiser. A good cause. So let's give this a whirl. First and foremost, let's push the engine into a worker and see what it does. Actually, let me just check my to-do first. Fix recording resolution, we did that. Investigate why that can wait. We already did that. Um, detect and use off-screen canvas will wait. I'm getting a better sense of what I can accomplish in three hours. Okay. Okay, in wireworld.js, engine equals engine.js. Instead of that, we're going to do const engine equals new worker 
engine worker.js. Nope, just engine.js. That's fine. And we're going to just search for engine.js throughout the code base. It's only there. Cool. New worker engine.js. And then instead of engine.this and engine.that, we're going to change all of our engine, all of these. We're going to change these to, oh, by the way, hang on. This needs an options object. MDN worker. options module really can I use dot com module workers web worker module web worker interesting we're going to give it a shot Events, methods, worker, options, type can be classic or module. Type, module. So Firefox doesn't support engines as modules. I'm only using cell state. I wonder how to detect that. Um, detect web worker module type. Module syntax might work in might not work in Firefox. I'm going to have to check that. But before I do, I'm going to say all these engine calls are going to become engine.post message. Um, and it's going to be called um, type. Oh, whoops. Type set rhythm args. There we are. So it'll get a call name and then arguments. Okay. And then up here in engine, uh, self dot add event listener message. Event switch event dot type K 
case. Initialize, set rhythm, advance, reset, break. And call that with event.args. Let's just try that. Oh, and then down here, the render function, render equals render, initialize, render, okay. So again, render is now post message and it's just going to be Type render args like that. Let's try that. I suspect this is going to blow up in my face, but let's find out first. Object can't be cloned. Why is that? Set rhythm. One moment. GUI dot state. And here, and here, and no, you know what? We'll do these one at a time. It's complaining about this one. Let's make it happy about this one. GUI dot state. I see. We need to make state more sanitized. We don't even need all these values. So Object dot assign or no args is going to be GUI dot state and then what was the problematic one? We just get rid of current pop-up it should be fine so current pop-up undefined uh, yeah so let's try that object can't be cloned initialize Right, the render function, which we're going to leave out. Update paper. Um, and also down here, engine.add event listener message event switch event.data.type. That's right, it's got to be switch event dot data dot type. Case render. And we're just going to do GUI update paper event dot data dot args dot dot dot. Args needs to be event.data.args. Let's try that. Uh, 
Ah. A new issue. It can't be dot slash engine JS. It needs to be dot slash. JS. So it's no longer a relative path either. Import call expects exactly one argument. And Safari's debug is failing us, so we're going to switch to Chrome. Great, this looks good. Window is not defined in engine. Uh, that's right, we had that useful. We're gonna just leave that out. Maximum call stack size exceeded. Post message in reset. Hmm. Type render. Web workers, maximum call stack. Nope. Good old stack overflow. Somewhere in your code, you're calling a function which calls a f another function until you hit the call stack limit. There's almost always a recursive function, but that's not the case here. One second. Initialize. Reset. We run down to here. Continue to here. Nothing wrong in there. And then in. Continue to here. That's all fine. Post message in. Call stack, hide pop up, so that's not an issue. Let's try that again. Reset, post message. And I think a cat has knocked something over. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Turns out it was not a cat-based interruption, it was a spouse-based interruption. Everything worked out. Let's see. Why would this cause a problem? Post message, maximum call stack size exceeded. Doesn't help. Okay, hang on. Step in. Okay, what if I do post message hi, like that. Not a problem. Oh, I know what's going on. Okay, check this out. If I leave out first head and first tail, This is just fine. Here's what's going on. First head and first tail are linked lists, but they're linked lists in our cells, and our cells are a really complicated graph that's like interlinked. And what's happening is the browser has to, um, has to serialize this thing. And first head and first tail are terrible things to try to pass across here to serialize. So, we're going to do this instead. Going to get rid of that. Render's gone. Render. So instead of this, Render with height. Okay, hang on. Okay, all of the calls to render are going to be replaced with render. Okay. And render and render. Okay. So now we've got a function that we're going to run called render const render equals and it is going to draw the well we'll try different things but we're going to say um, list all the 
head and tail IDs. To do where was I? Here we are. Here I am. Okay. Right. So const head IDs equals array. Const tail IDs equals array. Uh, for let head equal first head, head isn't null, head equals head dot next. That's right, isn't it? Right, I would say cell not head. Okay. And then down here for let cell equals First tail. Okay. Head IDs dot push cell dot ID. Cells have IDs, right? Make cell index. Okay. So instead of IDs, we're gonna call them indices. Head indices, push cell index. Okay. And then down here, tail indices, push cell index. Post message, type render args. And by the way, this is just a um, this is a convention that I'm using because I'm replacing functions on the same thread with messages that need to accept, the, you know, need to pass the same arguments. Um, so here I'll say, um, well, what did I used to say? Engine. Here we go. I'll just copy one of these. And paste that in, except it's going to be head indices, tail indices. Okay. And then in here, render, update paper, and this is going to be head indices, and tails is going to be tail indices. So then for let i equal zero, i is less than num this upper num header tail indices i plus plus. And then we can just throw that in. Let's see, so, yeah. Get rid of num, oops, lowercase i is head color. We don't need that. This might actually run a little bit faster. The only problem is we have to send a whole bunch more information. And this is new information being generated every time. Um, being passed from being passed from the worker to the main thread. So we should look and see how our memory usage changes when we implement this. Uh, and now we need this stuff. Const that equals that dot length. Okay. Still not happy, which is fine. In Chrome. Okay, it's doing something, it's just not doing it right. So, 
Let's figure out what's going on. Active drawing, pixels, That's right, these aren't the correct indices. That is the index, okay, that is the index in the number of cells. It's not the index in the pixels. So I'm gonna do um, pixel index. Um, we've got width in here, right? Yes, we do, okay. And up here, width, okay. Um, y times width plus x. And we'll, we're going to send the pixel index instead. There we go. Okay. And now if we press play, cool. It is working all by itself, which is kind of surprising. And if we turn on turbo, oops turn on turbo seems to be working pretty quickly I'm skeptical clear the cache of Chrome yeah it's running it's running that fast on Chrome um, the next question is what, if anything, do I need to change in Engine.js so that it works on Safari? Unexpected token. It's unhappy with import. And probably on Firefox as well. Let me, uh, I'll leave that around, but localhost also unhappy here. Right. It's unfortunate that they fail silently. What's going on is engine just so happens to still be a module. It doesn't have to be. I can like get rid of a bunch of this stuff. What's cell state used for? Dead head tail wire. Okay. So I'm going to comment that out and instead use import scripts. No, am I? data.js. For now, I'm just going to use that. And now it is working in Safari. Is it not? Interesting. I'll have to look into what is going on in Safari. Can't find variable cancel animation frame and request animation frame. So in Safari, request animation frame is not available in workers, and neither is cancel animation frame. So instead of that, Now it's working in Safari. And hopefully now it's working in Firefox. And now we troubleshoot why it is slow in Firefox. Um, I'm gonna just hold on to this and put it in there. Um, we're going to profile it. Performance, start. And stop. And stop recording. Uh, flame chart. I mean, it's almost entirely idle, which is hilarious, right? Um,
Like, update paper is the only thing that's being called in the actual thread. But we want to debug... We want to measure the performance in a thread. Do any of our browsers support that? Performance th uh, web worker. Chrome, okay. Can I measure the performance of a web worker? Got it, okay. We're gonna do it in here. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell us what is slow in Firefox, but hopefully there should be some correlation across browsers in this case. Okay, performance. Um, record. Play. Oh, you know what? Now it's looking kind of slow in Chrome as well. Which is fine. We just got to figure out how and, and why. So... Processing profile. Take your sweet time. Here we go. Um, bottom up. Hmm. Here we go. Worker. Okay. Worker is running practically non-stop, which is expected. Long task, that is fine. Here's what I'm going to do instead. Let's see. No, no, I do want to investigate this before I go completely off the, uh, you know, off the beaten path and implement this weird hack. Before I do that, I want to figure out how to better handle this. It is cool that whatever's going on in that web worker is not impacting the responsiveness at all of the main thread. That's pretty cool. I'm real happy with that. I just want to better manage... Okay, so engine. So what I changed here was request animation frame. If I change that back in Chrome, it performs better. I am going to upload or uh, stage my changes and run prettier. What changes did prettier make? Fine. GUI, semicolon. Yeah, these are fine. Okay. Okay, here's a thought. So, engine, let's see. Okay, so, moved engine.js into a worker, although, here, uh, type module is gone doesn't make a difference because into a web worker it can no longer be a it can no longer be a um,
module because of support missing on some browsers for module type web workers. Although I could probably do, instead of this, let's try import scripts, JS, um, data.js. Let's see if that actually works. It does not. Uh, let's find out why. Probably can't find it. It exists. Import scripts. Self dot import scripts. Self dot import scripts. Let's try that. Failed to execute. Oh, there we go. That's why. So I don't need that. I can just do data.js. Unexpected export. Okay. So now, basically, the code base is divided between scripts that are written as modules and scripts that are written as non-modules. Hang on. Firefox, web worker. Some functions that are common, yeah, dump is gone. Set interval, set timeout, that's fine. Import scripts, all workers. Oh right, I got that working, it just didn't, uh, it didn't like loading a module. And then, what's this, worker location? Absolute location of the script executed. Meh. Okay, so worker. Here we are again in the documentation. Support for ECMAScript modules and worker. Firefox says no. Safari says yes. What version of Safari am I running? 14. That's why. Okay. I don't have a recent enough version of Safari to support ECMAScript module syntax, but that's fine because I also can't support Firefox doing that. And I'm committed to getting this to work across browsers, at least the browsers that I've got, um, and hopefully, I mean, I should test what the earliest browsers that, you know, can run this thing. Um, but I'll do that down the road. Engine. Let's see. Request animation frame. Whoopsie, did I already commit this? No, I didn't. Okay. So, timeout is set timeout. comment that out and cancel animation frame we're going to comment that out okay i don't trust chrome with the cache oops cancel my bad clear data time. Oh, 
Okay. Slows molasses. Or at least it renders slows molasses. Like uh, it updates the main thread as slow as that. So gotta figure out why. If speed is greater than one. Oh, greater than or equal to one. Uh, right. Otherwise, delay MS. Min delay, max delay. So let's try changing the min delay to 100. So that's not so bad. Let's try the other browsers. Firefox. Very slow. Let's figure out what is slowing down Firefox's main thread. If it is the main thread. Oh, what was that? There we go. Okay, so something does seem to be slowing down Firefox's main thread a little bit. Flame chart. No, it's not that. Snapshot. Compare this one with this one. It's mostly arrays, that's to be expected. Not a whole lot of bytes though. That's interesting. Alright, I'm not going to worry about memory leaks or anything like that. I'm just going to trust the um, message posting. Uh, what do you call it? the communication between the worker thread and the main thread. Here's what I'll try. I will try removing turbo, just for now. Turbo is false, that's fine was turbo, count is, and we're just going to say get rid of count, um, update, render, request animation frame, we're going to get rid of that. Turbo is going to be interesting, because we're basically going to try to throw it away. The whole worker is going to become disposable, like a Kleenex. You turn on Turbo and it stops listening to you, right? if playing turbo is turbo. Do I really care? Start does recompute delay milliseconds and run. But I'm already doing recompute delay. Okay, that's weird. Run. <laughs>
just thinking this through. One second. This function isn't even in use anymore. It's just set rhythm. And initialize set rhythm advance reset. Okay. We're no longer interested in was turbo. Was playing. Nice. <laughs> okay, let's just see if this plays nicely. It kind of stutters. You see that? And the reason it's doing that is because the timer that we used to be using to render things, request animation frame, is gone from the engine and we've replaced it with a direct call. Like when we receive a render state, uh, a, re a render event from the engine, a render message, um, we're like immediately updating the paper. So instead of doing that, what we ought to do is like hold on to the, let's see. Um, let last render equal null uh, render const render equals request animation frame render if last render isn't null. GUI update paper, last render, last render equals null. Last render equals event data args. Break. So what's this all about? Basically, we are decoupling the speed at which the thread renders. When the thread calls render, all it's doing is it's telling, sorry, the worker. When the worker sends a render message, all it's doing is it's telling the main thread that there is new data to render. The main thread waits until the next frame to check and see if there is a new frame to render. That's basically what we're doing. Let's just see what that does. No, it's still stopping and starting. Now, we know from our previous um, measurements of the speed of this thing 
we know that the we know that the the speed of an update is rapid and so rather than having the engine have a timer to compete with the request animation frame timer maybe what we should do here is say um, post message type uh, render uh, ready no render consumed args empty array there we go This is going to get a little messy, but let's find out what happens if we do this. Case render consumed. Um, advance. What args does advance even have? None. Okay, so not going to worry about that. Uh, reset has no args. Set rhythm does, initialize does. Okay. Um, this isn't right. Instead, down here, we're going to say. Um, If okay, and then in here, um, speed is greater than hmm. We effectively want in the case of request animation frame, we effectively want the main thread to be the governor of when the engine should um, should update. For now I'm going to leave it like this and that's going to be our next goal. Oops. Um, Firefox make sure that it's not cached. Okay, and then Chrome. So my friend Pat and I were thinking about this. If you just shove the engine into, um, into a web worker, the possibility of stuttering, like we're seeing, even here, as fast as it's going, it's considerable enough that it might not be justified until you do something like our uh, turbo, our new web worker based turbo strategy. <sighs> it's 8.30 local time, Pacific time. Um, we've got an hour left. Let's see. going to update the to-do. So, web worker finessing. Um, main thread needs 
a main thread should be in charge of timing. That's what it is. The main thread should be in charge of timing. Engine should only update and render. So, min delay and max delay should go away. Set rhythm should go away. Playing, speed, delay, all that stuff should not be in here. Uh, we don't need total, uh, we, we should actually keep doing total time, shouldn't we? And maybe in the future to do um, post message. No, let's get rid of total time. We're done with that era. We've got a fast enough algorithm to crunch this stuff. Initialize, advance, reset, and then um, case um, turbo. And then in here we're going to say turbo. Okay. Initialize set rhythm, we're done with. Recompute delay, we're done with. We're not going to do set timeout stuff. Okay, so run is now the same as update and render. Advance is the same as update and render. Let's look at run. Run is never called. We're going to make this the new turbo. And for now, we're going to do while true update, render. No, we're not. <laughs> to do. That is not the sort of code that you want to just leave dangling. Um, but yeah, turbo is going to be pretty interesting. Okay. Update, advance, reset. And then in wire world, set rhythm, so state changed, okay, we need a new module in the main thread that does the roles that we just removed from engine.js. This is fine. This code that we took out of Engine.js is still useful. It should just drive the engine from the main thread. Because basically any non-turbo timing um, is just going to basically do a post message and immediately get back an update, right? So I'm going to create a new module. Import timing from timing.js. Oh. That's weird. Hang on. It was supposed to be called timing, but timing. Okay. Just going to throw a bunch of the deleted code. Reset, turbo. Oh, what's in reset? Engine, reset. Okay, yeah, there's no timing in there. Cool. Um, 
Okay. Let playing is false, speed is one. Yep, all that stuff. Total time we are leaving out. Set rhythm. Cool. run gross going to take a different approach to writing timing JS. I'm going to take the last version of engine JS open selected version paste it into here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we don't need any of this. We do need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. Initialize contains no timing information. Set rhythm obviously does. Um, run. We don't need count. We'll just call this render like that. Although. Timing probably is not going to do, is probably not going to make any distinction between update and render. Um, here is null, cool. Get rid of update. Get rid of advance. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Then export set rhythm. So let's see what happens here. We no longer need render. Update is only called in one place. Cool. This is all in the main thread, which is fine. Speed, delay, turbo, timeout ID. are going to not worry about turbo for now. Set rhythm. Was playing is playing. Playing speed turbos rhythm data. Recompute the delay based on the speed. We can just do that here. Now I like it as a separate function. Okay. If we weren't playing and now we are, then we run. Otherwise, if we're playing, and yeah, okay, we'll bring back the was turbo and turbo.
Yeah, forget it. We're going to leave this out for now. Let's see if... Yeah, that's fine. If playing, if turbo or speed is greater than or equal to one, so if speed is greater than or equal to one, otherwise we will use... Okay, yeah, this is just fine. This is fine. We do need an initialize though. Const initialize equals. Um, advance. Advance equals advance. Let advance. Initialize set rhythm. Um, nullish execute. I think it's dot question mark call. Question mark dot call. Okay, question mark dot boom. What's the earliest support for this? 80, 13. That might be something to revisit, but whatever. Advance. Okay, and then in here, timing is going to do instead of this it's going to be timing.set rhythm gui.state and then here Timing dot initialize engine. Nope, it's going to be a function to advance. Engine dot post message type advance. We can get rid of empty args. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Um, importing binding name timing is not found. Const timing equals that. Thanks for nothing, Safari. That is Safari's go-to complaint when something fails to parse in a module. Timing JS line 42. Debugger. Timing.js. Huh. Missing declaration after export keyword. No, it's not. Timing JS line 42. 
Okay, maybe there's... Maybe it's this. No. Maybe it's this. Oh. There we go. Huh. Set rhythm, initialize. This syntax was fine in Engine.js before. There we go. And then line 13 of timing. Let underscore advance. There we go. Check and see the speed, console.log speed. And we're going to dock this to the side again, console. Undefined. Log rhythm data speed undefined. Okay, so there's something in the GUI causing speed to be undefined. Parse float range inputs dot speed dot value console dot log should be one. Console.log initial state dot speed. It's one. Set rhythm GUI state. Console.log GUI dot state dot speed. Undefined. Cool, we're getting there. Um, state dot speed. Console dot log state dot speed. That's why. If speed isn't undefined, you know what, I'll just do isn't equal to null. There we go, and then smaller, and then larger. One again, cool. Get rid of all those console.logs. Slower, faster, 
slower, faster. Okay. And then in here, we're going to do what we did before. Uh, let queued render equal null. Um, check render queue. Const check render queue equals. And this is just going to be request animation. For, we already have one? No, we don't. And in here, if queued render isn't null, and then in here, GUI update paper. Queued render, and then in here, queued render equals event data args. Perfect. Seems that way at least. Again, don't trust Chrome's cache. Cache bust. Hit play. And slow down and speed up. Slow down, speed up. And we're just going to make sure that, okay, raf and stop and raf and stop and raf. Okay, so when speed is one, we're requesting animation frame, just like we ought to. Okay, the only thing we need to do now is implement turbo. So web worker turbo. That's the next step. Engine, cool timing, cool, GUI, <laughs> stupid bug, this might belong in a different, um, no, Wireworld JS is an 85 line module. I am absolutely fine with what's in it right now. Run prettier. Don't be shy. Okay. Something's slowing down. That was odd. Okay. Wireworld JS. It's a white space thing. Great. Okay. Separ okay, so separated timing.js from engine module moved, I should say isolated. That's the t wording I typically use. Moved engine JS into a web worker. It can no longer be a module because of support missing. Yep. Um, cool. So we've taken Turbo out. I think we have enough time to put it back in. Oh, I forgot to test all across browsers. That looks good. No difference here, of course. And then Firefox. Whoopsie. change. Cool. Okay. I'm feeling good about this. Isolating. <clears throat> Boy, do I have a lot of wire worlds open. Okay. Um, yeah. Isolating timing from engine was a good call. 
because timing is in user space. Basically, it's not that it's in user space. Um, when timing is governed by the top speed slider up here, this interaction and this interaction, um, a worker shouldn't be responding to these. A worker shouldn't be bothered with timing. Not really. Instead, a worker should be super fast, and if you want to slow it down to like a snail's pace or a turtle's pace, you just ask it to do the fast thing less frequently. Now, let's try turbo. Okay. Wireworld JS. Let engine equal new worker. Engine. Okay. Let engine. const handle engine message equals that yep okay create engine const create engine really build build engine equals engine equals new worker engine at event listener yep call this rebuild engine if engine isn't null dot terminate engine dot remove event listener okay so we always have an engine but oh and of course um, Timing needs to reinitialize. No, it doesn't, because engine is a local value. Cool. Okay. So we won't ever have to worry about that. Rebuild engine. Fine. Let's check this. Make sure that it still works. It would be a shock if it didn't. Cool. Turbo is the weird bit. Set rhythm. Was turbo. So initialize needs a new
Let's not worry about turning turbo off just yet. We want to see what it does when it's on. So, while true, okay, let last render equal performance dot now. While true, if last, uh, let now equal last render, no, performance dot now. If now minus last render is greater than how many times a second? One time a second, 10 times a second. So we will send render events a hundred times a second. Last render equals now render. Okay. Now we're just going to do if, hang on, we need to think of the state change. I should uh, draw this out. So playing versus not playing, turbo versus not turbo. So state zero is not playing, not turbo. State one, playing turbo, uh, not turbo. State two, playing turbo. State three, not playing turbo. Okay. So, state zero to state one. We just want to run state zero to state three no big deal here just no op boring let's try this again okay if if we weren't playing and now we're playing, then if turbo we'll call it for now just do turbo <laughs> else run else if turbo and wasn't turbo then we cancel animation frame and timeout ID is null and we clear what's inter we're doing interval? No we're not. Clear timeout timeout ID. Okay, just like before. And then here, to do, rebuild engine, and then run.
No. This is do turbo. Else if not turbo. Else if and playing. Okay, else if. Here. If playing. If it wasn't previously playing. Oh, that's why. I only drank half of my caffeine tonight. Okay, give me a second. I'm confusing myself. Okay. So. First we want to handle if we run or we turbo if turbo do turbo else run okay else if playing and turbo and was turbo Is this logic? Else if playing and not turbo and was turbo. There we go. And then in this case, we want to um, stop turbo and run. There we go. If turbo, start turbo, yep. And let's see, if you stop playing, else if not playing, and was playing, and Turbo, stop turbo. It's got to be. I want to. I want to consolidate these. This is kind of complicated. Started playing, else if, not playing, and was playing, this code here will handle um, stopping the run loop. But if turbo, stop turbo. Else if playing. Well, 
What a mess. If turbo and wasn't turbo, cancel out of these and start turbo. Um, I'm going to name this stop timers. Stop timers. Const stop timers equals. There we go. But if, okay, but if you're playing and turbo and not turbo, else. Take a look at this. I think this makes sense. And then start turbo, stop turbo, um, set turbo. Here, advance, set turbo. And stop turbo becomes set turbo false. I don't need this knowledge. Good. And then in Wireworld, initialize. Turbo enabled. So, no, it's not set turbo. It is start and stop turbo. Okay, true, that's fine. True, and then this is stop turbo. Gonna look at this again. Okay, stop the stop timers, start turbo, stop turbo, run. Gonna change stop timers to stop running. Okay. Start turbo, stop turbo. I guess I can do this for consistency. Stop running. Yep, this is looking much better. And instead of start rhythm, 
<laughs> Set rhythm. My bad. Okay. And then in Wireworld. Console.log. Start. Turbo. Console.log. Stop turbo. Going to... There we go. Dock it here. Console. Play. Pause. Play. Start turbo. Stop turbo. Start turbo. Stop turbo. Cool. That works. Now I just need to implement start and stop turbo. This one, start turbo, is engine post message type turbo. This one is to do. Okay, and we already have turbo in the engine, so let's just see what happens. I wonder if render is slowing it down. Possibly. For let i equals zero, i is less than 192, i plus plus, update. I don't know, it feels slower, doesn't it? I can also do this. Um, let count equal zero. Count plus plus. Count equals zero. Post message. Type count. Args. Count. And then in wire world, handle event message, case count, console.log event.data.args zero. did it again. Engine count needs to be on the other side of post message. Let's try it again. Turbo.
It just doesn't seem very fast. I wonder what the hang-up is. Here is what I'm going to do. Okay, wire world to do. In here, we want to rebuild engine, but uh, we need to reinitialize it. data but we need to let data um, const let's see Post message type. Um, overwrite args. Last render. And then up here, queued render. Last render. Here we go. Last render. And then engine initialize. Restore. Restored render equals null. And then in here. Make cell gets a pin pixel index. Const pixel index equals.
So restored render contains generation, width, height, indices, head indices, tail indices. Not a fan of this either. Okay. Const cells by. No, that's not necessary. Okay. I'm going to undo a whole bunch. I don't know. It sure is weird that it's so slow. I'm not going to worry about restored render for now. To do, oh right, restored render, initialize engine with restored render. Okay, engine, okay. Stay on page, please, okay. Just curious, what exactly is happening? worried about main. Main's doing just fine. Why are there two workers? Hang on. Engine post message turbo, right, and then stop rebuild engine. Rebuild engine. 
cool. Turn off and the generation should actually reset. And it does. Cool. Performance. Actually, turn this off. Here, just disable it. Okay. Performance. I hit the wrong button. I'm not sure what this is. I won't worry about it. Refresh. Delete all this. Record. Play. And pause. So now there should be two engines. Okay, so main, worker, right, just infinite loop turbo. Not a surprise. Although this is a surprise, why is update being called? over and over again. Clear, reset, turbo, active, play. <sighs> I'm not recording. <laughs> okay, record, turbo, play. Pause, turbo off. Job done. Look at that. Why is this one being called and then this one? Render, yeah, update. Maybe. Looks like I have some research to do because this turbo function, it starts, it's uninterrupted, which is good, but it's got multiple entries, which makes me wonder what is going on. So the good news is, the worker is doing what we expected it to do, to some extent. Which is, it's taken the work off the main thread, and it can go as fast as it wants. The next question is, why is this the fastest it will go? What is the worker doing? It might just be that this worker is so there's per, there's post message it might just be that the way that web workers work is you cannot do this clever trick in the first place i think this is deserving of like reaching out to some folks and asking initialize engine with restored render Right, that's a to-do, that's a to-do.
Okay. Before I go tonight, I am going to turn the renders from arrays into here. Event data args zero. So it becomes an object. And in engine. Here we go. Post message type render args. And this is going to be one of these bad boys. Once again, generation, width, height, head indices, tail indices. Cool. And then, let's see. GUI will once again accept that shape. in update paper, and Wireworld will have these objects. Okay. Just going to quickly test this. Broke. Oh, here we go. Still broke. So engine sends... Oh, there we go. This needs to be... There we are. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> All right, it is running. So our render objects are more straightforward. Engine.js, restored render. So then we can do something like, so that object would have a generation, a head indices, and a tail indices. Okay, so generation start generation. Generation equals start generation. No, nope, that's not it. Okay, here's what we do. Reset, and then if restored render isn't null, generation equals restored render dot generation. And then in reset, to do tail indices. Because it's getting late. Head indices, tail indices. To look these jerks up by their index, I would need to There we go. So const num head indices. I'll forget this here. Num head indices. There 
That's pretty. There we go. Const num heads equals. Okay. Const head indices, tail indices equals restored render. Const num heads equals. head indices dot length const num tails equals tail indices dot length for let i um, equals zero i is less than num heads i plus plus for let i equals zero i is less than num tails i plus plus and basically oh you know what Reset can take restored render. Reset, reset restored render, reset restored render. Okay. Generation equals zero, first head, first tail, last head, last tail. If restored render isn't null, oh, there we go. I'm almost half an hour over. I should wrap this up. Restored render. Yup. And then cells dot for each cell. belong here. Um, okay. Let head indices equal new set restored render dot head indices or cool tail indices. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere.
Okay. const reset state equals now let reset state equal cell state dot dead error wire let reset state equal wire yep if Head indices dot has cell dot pixel index reset state equals hmm cell dot first okay let reset state equals cell dot first state okay here we go reset state. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Let reset state equal cell dot first state. If restored restored render isn't null. If res if head indices has cell pixel index, then cell state dot head. Else, if tail indices dot has cell dot pixel index, reset state is cell state dot tail. Else, it's wire. Cool. So now we should be able to turn on turbo and turn it off and turn up. Oh, nope, that broke. Interesting, the bug is somewhere in here. Cell indices. with plus x oh that's why tail indices tail indices let's try that fast forward Yeah, that seems about right. It's terrible, but it seems right. I wonder. Engine. Turbo. Thank you. 
I'm just going to copy paste comment out the existing turbo and then let count is equal zero let last check equal performance.net while true count yep post message um, render update um, right post message type count args count count equals zero and then wire world we still have count okay cool okay Cool. That actually tells us a lot. But now if we put this in here, play and run. Holy moly. Okay. So the problem is <laughs> the problem is browsers can optimize the browsers can optimize our very basic example incredibly well. What they can't do is optimize the update function the same way. That is interesting. Okay, so we're done with this. Um, investigate performance bottleneck in Turbo Web Worker. Okay, now I'm stepping away. Or, no, I'm not. Engine. Turbo, comment that back in, comment this out, and break, comment this out. Run prettier. I'm not keen on leaving the live version of Wireworld Player in this state. So what I'm going to do is make this a branch and back master out to an earlier commit. But I will call this episode six um, as, a, as a tag. Okay. Um, implemented. Turbo web workers which don't live up to their name. Oh, right. Cut a branch. So, web workers. And also, I'll call this episode 6. I forgot to tag episode 5 from the looks of it. So this is tag episode 5. Tag this episode 6. And we are going to back master out of everything we've done so far today. Okay, and then force push. Oops. Um, master. Huh.
That's weird. Okay, I'll have to add something like, um, Simple little change. That should work, actually. Local post. Yeah, that works. Okay. And... Weird. Push both. I expected I'd need... To do a force push, but I guess I don't have to. Okay. Yep, there we go. So now Master is back in order, and the work we're experimenting with in a branch is separate. All right. Whew. This was a long stream, but I've I'm pretty happy with what I've accomplished so far. I feel like if this clever trick is the wrong call in web workers, and I should instead use, you know, a similar approach inside the worker to what I did in, um, in, a, in the main thread, then that's where we'll pick things up next week. But in the meantime, I intend to ask around there's a lot of people knowledgeable about web workers who would probably be willing to help me investigate. Anyway, if that sort of thing happens, uh, I will present what I learn during the next stream. If you are watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. If uh, you're watching the live stream, which I don't think you are, thanks for sticking around from the sweltering skybox in the corner of the level. This is Res Mason signing off for the night.